Ah non, non, non et non, je veux que le vin qui parte et qui se promène dans le monde se promène et soit un peu une image de moi. 80 years old and still going strong, say admiringly all those who know me. How many of them are there? How many of you, friends of today, of yesterday, of forever, expressing surprise at my unchanging youthfulness? How many thousands all over the world in every country where Bordeaux is a magic word, where wine enchants the palate and the heart? Yes, 80 already. I can hardly believe it, and yet it's true. For I was born in 1930 at Pauillac in the Médoc, where the world's finest wines are made in the mind of a man of genius, Baron Philip de Rothschild. His father had entrusted a treasure, Chateau Mouton Rothschild, to him, the youngest of the family, the cadet in French. And that's how he came to think up my name, Mouton Cadet. Mouton? Me? I who never claimed to be a chateau wine, least of all that one. How come? Quite simply because in my early years I really was Mouton. It was in 1930 and 1931. Two vintages that were too difficult for the wine from the chateau to be sold under its own illustrious name. So it was sold under mine. Then nature smiled again and Mouton Rothschild returned to the limelight. I was no longer needed. Would I simply disappear after those two years of sterling service? Fortunately not, for meanwhile wine lovers had taken an interest in me, attracted by my quality and my price, much more affordable than a chateau wine. I made a place for myself in people's minds and on their tables. So much so that in 1931, to meet the demand, Baron Philip had to seek supplies from neighboring estates and that's how I became a brand. Already my name, Mouton Cadet, no longer referred to the original terroir, but to the ideal of excellence I'd been invested with. My growing success in the 1930s encouraged Baron Philip to extend my domain. I embraced Omedoc wines, always carefully chosen. But it was in Pauillac, the family home, that I was matured, blended and bottled. Step by step, almost without realizing it, I was inventing a new way of making a wine. had another close shave in 1940. The chateaux, rooted in Bordeaux history and turned in on themselves, were able to come through the war relatively unscathed. But I, whose source of supply was a long way off in a region going through hard times and with little or no transport, I thought my last hour had come. And yet, good ideas, of which I was one, are not so easily forgotten, and in 1947, Baron Philip brought me back to life. Better still, he extended my domain from the Medoc to the whole of the Bordeaux region. That way, whatever the conditions, I was able to offer you constant quality because I could be bought in from different parts of the vineyard. Henceforth, I would span the whole of Bordeaux with all its richness and incomparable flavors. <laughs> Although unanimously acclaimed, I had hardly strayed outside France. The British were the first to succumb, taking me to their hearts in the late 1950s. It's been a hard day's night, and I've been working like a dog. It's been a hard day's night, I should be sleeping like a love. Well, I've got to say, judging the Mouton Cadet competition was uh, something absolutely marvelous. Start spreading the news. Then came the Americans in the 1960s. Even today, 
I want to be a part of it. New York, New York. It was there in the United States that I really started my international career. Soon joined by Mouton Cadet Blanc, my little brother, born in 1972. What you want, what have you got it, and what you need. The figures make your head spin. In 1975, three million bottles of me, red and white, were sold worldwide. In 1986, I reached a record 17 million. Are you sure you want to do this? No, but I'm going to. Oh, I've been fooling myself about Ron for too long now. I was well into my 50s by then, an age at which lasting success can no longer rely on fad or fashion, but must be built on solid foundations. How did we do this? We had our own secret weapon, Baroness Philippine de Rothschild. In 1988, my dear Baron Philip had been succeeded by his daughter, Baroness Philippine. We got on famously right from the start. It's to her that I owe a milestone in my life, the move in 1993 into my new house, the Saint Laurent Médoc winery, just a stone's throw from Poyac. And what a house! Nothing was too good for me. Cutting edge equipment, an automated vat house, ultra modern bottling lines. My label changed too to match my status as the world's biggest selling Bordeaux AOC brand. A pretty canopy, the Rothschild colors of blue and gold. Thank you indeed, Baroness Philippine. Established in such style, I was able to extend my family. To the Mouton Cadet Rouge, I have been from birth, followed by Mouton Cadet Blanc, where added a Rosé, then Mouton Cadet Reserve, Médoc and Grave. With age, I believe I may well have discovered the secret of eternal youth. Always seeking to please, moving forward, remaining yourself while still being able to call yourself into question anticipating changes in habits and tastes. In 2004, you appreciated the makeover that left me fruitier and rounder. In the process, I gained a new label, like a faithful soldier decorated for good and loyal service. It shows my present emblem, the little bearded ram that accompanies me on my travels and that Baroness Philippine has affectionately baptized Barbacus. Today, at the age of 80, 
I have lost nothing of my initial energy. I have come through two crises, the one in the 1930s and the current one. I've survived a world war. I took part in the post-war boom years and have stood up to ever keener and more talented competition. And I'm still here, very much so. I bring happiness in millions of bottles to people in 150 countries worldwide. Some might think that would be enough, but not me. There's so much for me still to discover, to invent, to conquer. So see you in 2030 for my centenary. Take Mouton Cadet's word for it, I'll still have surprises in store for you.